What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Got a brother on that did over 20 years in federal prison. He actually had reached out to me and was like, hey, yo, Chad, man, I need some help. And I did his stuff pretty much, Nick. I did it for free because I felt like, yo, you've been in there too long. The judge was playing games, and I wanted to help you get out of prison. We did it, and you got out on December 26th. But anyway, tell the people who you are, where you're from, and let's get into your story. Uh, yeah, my name is Nick Hampton, and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. And yes, I did 20 years in federal penitentiary for bank robbery. Nick, what was, how old were you when you went to prison? That's what I want to know. Uh, I was 36. 36 years old, vice lord. You're from Chicago, right? Yes, yes. What was life like growing up in Chicago, though? Uh, man, life in Chicago, you know, I can't say it was uh, super good or, you know, super bad. You know, it's just, you know, as of life growing up, you know, you got little partners and friends and, you know, we hung together as a family and some choices, you know, we made, <laughs> man, made some bad choices in life. And, uh, you know, the consequences chose us for the bad part. You know, once you make a 10 second choice, it is going to cause you a lifetime of consequences. You, What I mean by that is if you choose to go up to a third story window and open it up, you choose to jump out, you chose that choice. You made that choice, but the consequences will choose you. You might get a broke leg. You might get a broke back. You might die, you know, so you got to be careful, you know, making choices in life because the consequences will choose your actions behind it. Gang affiliated. I mean, Chicago's dangerous place, right? Oh, yeah. No doubt. I think the whole world is nowadays, but Chicago most definitely has always been a dangerous place, yes. What was it like for you as a vice lord, though? I mean, were you guys beefing with other gangs? Were you afraid to go in different neighborhoods? Well, you know, Chad, it, it was always when we used to beef against the oppositions, you know, and you write certain places you go to can cause you a bunch of problems because everybody knows everybody. If you come in the neighborhood and if you ain't part of our circle, we don't know you. That means we checking you out and you got to be something else, you know, so it could be detrimental to you, you know. Could be detrimental. Walking into the prison system, though, it's kind of like this Midwest coalition. Was it that way when you first walked in? Oh, well, you know, with the feds, of course, you know, the, you know, in, in federal penitentiary, yeah, we have a coalition because, you know, the federal Bureau of Prisons is the great melting pot. You know, you got people from all corners of life, you know, not just the 50 states of the United States. You got uh, Vietnam, you got Guam, you got um, Venezuela. You, you see what I'm saying? You got people from all walks of life that's in the Federal Bureau of Prison because it's a money system. They lock anybody up and everybody in the feds is tough. So that's why we have the coalition. You fight against a lot of different people, man. So you got to stick with your own. Midwest coalition, though, I mean, you could be in the street beefing with these dudes and now you're in prison and you're fighting yeah. with them against other people, right? That's right. That's true. That odd for you to be, you know, like, hey, man, these dudes are my enemies in the street. Now I'm out here, you know, ready to go to war with you? Well, you know, I, I didn't look at it like that. You know what I'm saying, Chad? I look at, you know, at the present time and present moment, if you got my back, I got your back. Some people can't get past that point. It's a lot of them do have situations where they feel they shouldn't do it. But, hey, when that number is called, you got to do what you got to do because if not, it can cost you. You go against the grain, what's been laid down, it can cost you. It could definitely cost you. What was your first prison? Oh, I'm talking about um, in the feds? Yeah. Terre Haute. So you go to Terre Haute. What's it like for you in Terre Haute to walk in there? Oh, man, I, I was cool because, you know, first of all, when you're a man that got confidence and, you know, you know you can walk anywhere in life, it don't bother me. And then I had a lot of friends that was there. You know, once you go there, shit, you see everybody that you've been knowing for years, you know, some people you think might have been dead, they up in there, you know, so it was all right. You know, you can't be no chicken going to no prison. I mean, was it violently? I mean, was there violence there? 
Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You know, it is. You know, all USPs is murder, mayhem, and chaos. You know, you got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Do you have to carry a knife in there? On occasions, you know, yes. And there's young dudes watching this that think, man, in prison, yo, they see prison movies, they think, yo, it's all right, I'm going to be with the homies, I'm going to be out there working out. They don't realize, man, that you can lose your life in there. Yeah, no doubt. You know, you, you know, when you plugged and when you're in a situation, you might not be the ones that might be causing a problem. It could be somebody else that didn't did some shit and you don't even know that jumped off and you just be minding your business. Somebody come up from behind and try to pop you. So, you know, them the grits to go with the groceries, not to try to act like I'm slick, but hey, you know, somebody else down the line could cause you to get messed up. You and other people's getting fucked up when you ain't even aware of what's going on, you know? So it's a saying in jail, you got to stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. You ever been involved in any type of physical altercations in there yourself or with the homies? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's just a part of life, Chad. You know, but hey, thank God that you survived. I survived for 20 years. So I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm tough. I'm not trying to make it seem like, you know, I got all the smarts and the wits. You know, I just thank God that he protected me all them years because I seen many people get fucked up pretty good and not to be just cussing on your show seeing people get killed all kind of stuff you know what's it like to see someone get killed in federal prison how does it affect you well you you, you always feel bad because it could have been you you know what i'm saying but then again on the other hand it's situations where people do some messed up stuff and when they get popped on the other hand, you'd be like, oh, well, you know, he calls that on his, on his own. So, you know, sometimes you feel for him, sometimes you don't. But I don't like to just see nobody die. But, hey, people do things, you know, bring it on themselves, man. What's one of the worst things you've seen, you know, coming from an older dude that's been through it? You had a bunch of time. You did a bunch of time. Someone that people respect. What was one of the worst things that you've seen in there that affected you? Well. I seen people get advantage taken of, you know, that don't know no better and they wind up, you know, trying to associate and people use them, you know, send them off and they mess around, get hurt, joining different gangs and just want to be associated with people and they get sent off and that, that, that'd be pretty bad, but it's not your business. So you can't get involved in it, you know? Definitely. I've definitely seen that. You know, you, you talk about what? Sometimes it's these young dudes, right? They're like, yo, they just want to be down. They don't even understand what they're getting down with or who they're around. And sometimes them shot callers kind of manipulate people, right? And send them on dummy missions. They might end up killing someone and only had a 10-year sentence. Now they got life. Have you seen stuff like that? Well, I'm not just going to put it on those shot callers. You know, you got airheads and knuckleheads that, you know, might be under the, under the influence of drugs or whatever. You got crut balls in all sizes and form of life, you know. And uh, some people use you for the things that they want, and they'll send you off, you know. And if you don't have a man of your own, and if you're not strong to stay away from shit like that, yeah, you can find yourself being sent off. You know, as far as, like, violence, right? I mean, you're seeing people killed. Is that... Have you ever, like, been right there and witnessed it? Like, damn, man, dude just got stabbed in the chest, stabbed in the heart, stabbed in the head. Yeah, 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 no no, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Where do you, you know, see that at, Nick? What prison? Well, shit, I've I, I, I been in three USPs, and shit, I've seen them in all three USPs. People get punished, you know? So, man, it's just, unfortunately, man, shit like that goes on every day. Every day. A lot of dudes don't even realize it. You're in terror. Yeah. You end up getting out of the USP, right? You end up leaving that prison. Where do you go? Oh, well, you know, when I went to terror, yeah, see, when I got uh, the introduction, first of all, I was in USP terror. Hope. Then I went across the street to the FCI. I wound up catching, a, 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 like I told you, an introduction. So they sent me to USP Atwater in California. So when I left FCI, Terrorhood, I went to USP Atwater in California. And I'm gonna tell you, I've been to three USPs, Terrorhood, Atwater, and USP Canaan. 
all three of them about the same. I can't say which one was worse than the other one. It's all murder, mayhem, and just bloodshed. Shit. If, if you ain't careful, it could be any day it could be you. Any day it could be you. You get you catch an introduction charge. Tell us about yeah. that. Tell the people. People don't know what that means. Well, you know, I, 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 I got caught, you know, with 10 grams of heroin. You know, trying to make money, do what I need to do. And I got busted coming through the visiting room. So there you have it. Off I go to another USP. They didn't charge you with a new charge? No, they didn't charge. Well, they sent it out, you know, for the feds to pick it up. But by I was just fresh, just went to trial and got 37 years for bank robbery. And the feds kicked it back and told the uh, institution that they never saw anybody in the visiting room, had me nothing, pass it off to me, and by us, a lot of dirty cops and shit being the USPs, they didn't know how I got it. So they said, well, since we can't find nobody that passed it off to him where well, we can charge nobody else, we're not going to mess with him because he just went to trial and got 37 years, so he ain't going to do nothing suit up and go to trial again. So, you know, y'all deal with it. So they just left it as an institutional charge. Yeah, yeah, and they, right. they banged me for two years, no visits, no phones, no contact, you know, send me to another USP. Hey, Vince, you, you make, know, Vince, go ahead, I'm sorry. You make mistakes, but you learn from them. So eventually you end up turning your life around, and we'll, and we'll get into that, but I want to ask you a little bit right, about right. the drug trade in prison, right? Because a lot of things yeah, happen yeah. when, you know, you always hear people, man, don't mess with homos. Don't get involved in drugs. Don't gamble, and you'll be all right. That drug trade back then, what was a gram of heroin going for back then in prison? Well, shit, we sell it for five hundred dollars a gram. Hundred dollars a gram. What was it costing on the street back then? Oh well, shit, I had a plug where I was getting it for like seventy dollars. They allege this is alleged that someone brings it into you on a visit, and you would have got it in. Were you going to break it down, allegedly, or do you just sell it straight up as grams? Well, Statue you know, limitations I, is over with, so people know. Man, you know, my thing is, you know, I did my time, and you're right, shit. They can't get me no more because, hey, I got clear of those charges, but some people will take a gram and break it down, you know, like penitentiary grams. I looked at it as fast money as quick money. I, I get a whole gram up. I just want my money so I can keep pushing it. What were you putting money together for, a lawyer? Yeah, and trying to survive in general. It costs money to be in jail. If you don't have no loved ones and family members that help you out, and if you ain't got no job, you're going to feel the wrath from not having no money. Definitely feel the wrath. How many people you seen get jammed up over drug debts in there? How many people you seen beat off the yard by their people because they owe yeah, them man. Money? Hey, hey. Multiple people, black, white, Spanish, you know, all creeds of life, man. It's bad. You know, hey, you know, when you owe a person some money and you can't pay it, they'll be to see you. And it, it's going to cost you one way or the other. Let's talk a little bit about this, right? When you're part of an organization, a gang, a group, whatever, and you're getting, you know, you're getting the bag, as they say now. That's the word now, right? Getting the bag. Let's say you go down on a visit, you get hit. You have to look out for the homies. You got to look out for the shot caller. How does that work? Well, it all depends on the individual. You know, if if you weak, you soft, you know, they might tax you. But if, if you are outstanding, you know, member, you know, ain't nobody press you. But by you got love for who you be with and you respect people, you give them a little something, you know, but nobody extorted me. <laughs> Nick, you look like a pretty big dude, man. How tall are you, Nick? 6'3", 240. Nick was your celly, farmer. Yeah, old farmer bay. I just sent them $100 the other day. <laughs> was he a big dude or no? No, man. Farmer about 5'6". Sounds like a big dude on the phone, but so, you know, just you were talking about your celly. <laughs> You know, you got yeah. in prison and Farmer reached out to me, been in prison a long time, and I'm doing his stuff for free, too. I'm going to help Farmer get out of prison. Hopefully, he's got yeah. a life sentence. But yes. I kind of want to touch on that drug trade and what, what really goes on, because people see movies and they're like, you know, they you know they think of blood in and blood out, and they're like, man, you owe the Aryan Brotherhood 15 packs. 
It don't really work that way, man. Like you said, if you if if you're Hell an no. part of your organization, you, you're not being extorted, but you do look out for the homies. You look out for your people. Those are yeah, your people, no, 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 no doubt. You watch out for your people because you know if I come up, I want my people to come up. Why should I have some and somebody else look raggedy starving? That ain't how it go because they will bake your ass a cake. You know what I'm saying? If you doing good and you don't watch out for people you supposed to be watching out for now, they will come get you. I don't care who you are, but you got to have common sense. They're not going to try to extort you. They'll give you a chance to say, okay, show us love, you know? About baking the cake, they'll put it together. You won't even know what's coming, right? Damn right. You know what I'm talking about, Chad. So I'm sure that wasn't the first time, you know, that you had got hit on the visit or whatever, allegedly. But, you know, did you have trouble? I mean, you're getting money in prison. Is there trouble? Does trouble come with that for you? Not for me, you know, because like I say, you know, every man have to walk his own path. You know, certain people know who to mess with, you know, and, and if you ain't cut from that cloth to be in certain activities, don't get caught up trying to do it. That's all I can tell you, you know. Ever have issues where some dudes might owe you a couple of dollars and you got to holler at their car? Well, sometimes, but I look at it like this. I'm not going to give a person some that I can't afford to lose because I'm not going to let nobody trick me into getting a big guap when I know you can't pay for it. So if you let somebody beat you like that, basically it's on you. You know what I'm saying? But you got some dudes that are cr crush you for twos and fuels. They'll fuck you up for 10 to $15, but I'm, I wasn't that type of person like that. You know, I'll feed you with a long handle spoon. You call yourself thinking you slick and you get over on me. It ain't worth me fucking you up. It ain't worth me losing what I got going on. You just can't never come fuck with me no more. No, you blowed that. Beat it. Bye. You know? You know, being in prison all them years, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, me personally, I did 17. I think I told you that. Right. You see, you see people that victimize their own people, right? The white car, the Spanish car, the black yeah. car, the bloods, the whoever. Who do you think is right. the most vicious, man? The most vicious car from all the years that you've done in your perspective? Well, everybody can hold their own, but people just don't give a fuck about people and people just cruddy and shit like that. You got to go with DC. <laughs> the DC dude's got a bad rap. I didn't... I, yeah. I don't know, you know, in my opinion, man, I, I felt like the natives and, and the white dudes would crush their own without a blink of an yeah. eye. Yeah, but D.C., you know, I, I'm going to say this. You got a lot of old-timer dudes from D.C. that straight up, you know, they they can make it anywhere in the whole B.O.P. system. And some of them got some good morals and values. A lot of them that's young, they don't give a fuck about nothing. They vicious. They wolves. When you say wolves, you know, do you, do you see dudes in there doing robberies? Man, Chad, all kind of shit go on, man. You you know, you've been there, all kind of shit go on, you know. Only the strong survive. If you're weak, you got problems on your hand. Eventually, man, you end up kind of turning your life around in prison, right? And the judge kind of acknowledges that. No doubt, no doubt. I'm going to tell you why, though. I got tired of watching years and years go by, you know, lost a lot of family members, loved ones, and summertime come, you know, the heat be beating on you. That's when a lot of shit happened on the yard. And at one point in time in life, you just constantly keep looking over the wall, seeing trees and, you know, wishing you was on the other side of that gate, you know. So it becomes a point where you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when you become sick and tired and being sick and tired, you'll look for a change. And the only way you can make a change is to do good, not by changing, by constantly being in trouble. Because you can easily get in trouble, but it takes an act of Congress to get you out. You know what I'm talking about. The hole. You ever been to the hole? Yeah, man, I've been to the hole plenty of times. What's the longest you've done in the hole, Nick? Yeah, uh, about six months. What's that do to you mentally, man? Sitting in a cell all alone or even with a cell partner for six months. What does it do to you upstairs, man? Well, tell you the truth, I never looked at it like it, it played no 
uh, negative, you know, energy or nothing from that point of view, you know, hey, you do wrong, you know why you're in the hole, you just got to bite the bullet and swallow the pill. You know, I done wrong, I got six months to do it, and I'm going to do it, you know? Some people can't just do that, right? Have you seen people down there in the hole going nuts over being stuck down there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people go crazy, you know. Some people, I don't know if they be mentally disturbed or if they not strong. Some people put feces on themselves and have to be put on suicide watch. I don't know what be going on with them, but it never crossed my mind to do no crap like that, man. You know, hey, I guess it's just everybody is different. You know, some people can deal with things better than others. You know, I thank God. And fortunately, that I was strong and nothing never crossed my mind to ever do any stupid stuff. You know, hey. Them the grits to go with the groceries. You when you do wrong, you get caught, you gotta deal with the consequences. Like I told you, you make a choice, consequence to choose you though. Nick, how old were you when you went to prison? Well, when when uh the feds, I was uh 36. 36 years old. Tell the people, some of these young dudes are watching. How old were you when you walked out, Nick? Shit, 56. <laughs> Look at this. Everything great now. It was black, everything great, you know. I asked you that for a reason, because I want people to contemplate. Just think about that for a minute. The best years of your life, Nick, your mid-30s, oh, your early yeah. 40s, all yes. gone. Forever all gone. gone. You can't never get them back, right? Can't never get them back, but it made me stronger, though. You know why? Because the way I used to think, I don't think like that no more. I'm doing this interview because you helped me out and I really appreciate everything you did and I want to be of some type of assistance to you. So I'm only telling you how I used to be. I'm not that same Nick no more. Now don't get it wrong. If somebody step towards me, try to hurt me and my family, I got to do what I got to do. But other than that, I'm not out here trying to do no wrong. I'm not selling no drugs. I'm not game banging. I'm not doing none of that. You know, as you learn and you know to do better, you're supposed to do better. If you don't do better and you're constantly going backwards, then you know what you're doing. That's sin in your life and you're messing up, man. Nick, what's your biggest regret in life, man? You spent 20 years in there. What's your biggest regret? My biggest regret is not giving myself a chance and I could have been anything I want to be if I would have just stayed in school, graduated, and did what I had to do. You know, I hate the fact that I didn't give myself a chance to become successful, but I have a second chance in life now. So I still can move forward and do great things now that I'm out and I got a second chance at life. But I just hate that if I could turn a hand back a time, she didn't start me doing time, I'd have been somebody who had a good job too, making good money and taking care of my loved ones and family members. You know? I hear you. You know, 20 years in prison, man, like I said, some of the best years of your life, forever gone. You're out now. You end up getting this Christmas present. The day after Christmas, they let yeah. you out. But let they me ask did. you this, because I want people to know this. What was your release date, Nick? 2035. 2035. You're 56 now. You'd have been over, what, 60, what, 68? I, I've been close, to, been close to 70, right. Close to 70 years old, you'd have been getting out of prison. But now yeah. you get that news. What's it feel like when they come tell you, hey, brother, tell the people how it happens? Well, you know, uh, like I said, I had put a motion in, a uh, compassionate release motion in in 2021. And it was another guy that was controlling our circuit from Chicago, which uh, they ruled against him. So they made his case, the president case in Chicago, which shut it down for guys like me with the United stacker. States versus stacker. Right, United States versus Raw Stacker, right. So it stopped me from having a chance of getting out. You know, my lawyer had told me at first, if I would have filed my motion and the judge would have ruled on it, three to six months before they ruled on Thacker, I could have been getting out. But once that happened, it shut everything down. So. You know, I want I I understand the legal aspect. I want to know right. what it's like when the police come and they say, oh, hey, yeah, yeah. Hatton, you're leaving today. This this what I'm gonna tell you. So when I had contacted you, Freedom Fighters, and you helped put the motion together for me, 
So that was around like December the 13th. I called my sister because I filed it, you know, uh, certified mail. And I want to check to see that my mail, you know, the motion you did for me reached the courthouse. So my sister, she checked like December the 17th. She said, man, she said, your motion is still in Charleston, West Virginia. And I was pissed off. I said, man, I sent that mail certified uh, mail on December the 13th, and it's still held up in the state. I said, man, this don't make no sense. I told her to keep checking on it and, and let me know when it get to Chicago. So I look on the computer the day after Christmas, right? And I get an email from my sister, and it said motion granted. So I'm like, what in the world is my sister talking about motion granted? So I clicked on it, and she said, your motion been granted. The judge granted your motion. Hallelujah. So I cut the computer off, and I tell guys in the day room, I said, man, I just got an email from my sister saying that my motion got granted. I said, let me call my sister, see what's up. So I called her on the phone. She was like, Nick, your lawyer said the judge granted your motion, and they just waiting on paperwork to come back, and you'll be out by the end of the week. So I hang the phone up. I'm letting everybody know everybody in there happy. They cheering, they clapping, they hugging me. Man, about 15 minutes later, the secretary walk out. Now, I'm thinking at the end of the week, I'll be going home. She said, who's Hampton? I said, I'm Hampton. She said, sign these release form. You got to be off this yard today at 2 o'clock. Man, I ran, got my bath towel, went, took a shower, put my clothes on, and, man, I left everything to farmer. I said, you can have everything. I care less. I'm out of here. What was it like to walk outside, man, and be like, man, this is it. I'm free, man. Oh, well, the first thing I did once I got on the other side of R&D Doe, I got on my knees and I thank God. I said, Lord, thank you for keeping me safe all these years. Thank you for delivering me. And from this point forward, I'm going to walk the way that you want me to walk in life. There you have it. So now you're out here living your best life, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Never breathing, breathing good fresh air instead of the old. <laughs> still airing them units and stuff, you know? Go I don't... Go, I, go ahead, Nick. I don't have to worry about uh, somebody telling me, uh, count time, stand up, you know? I can go to my own refrigerator, open it up, you know? I can take a bath or shower. I can leave out that front door whenever I want. You don't understand how that feels until your freedom has been taken from you. You restrict it. Well, you can't do number walk in a six by nine cell, you know. Come on, man. That ain't no way for nobody to live. No way for no one to live. You know, you, the, the one thing that we don't usually talk about is, you know, you build friendships in there, relationships. Like, yo, this is my dude, right? This is my partner. And you leave right. people behind, man. What's it like, you know, to be doing time and living with a dude in the cell? And this is your partner. You hang out every day. You kick it. You laugh at night when the cell door gets locked. You watch football together, whatever you do. What's it like to leave someone like Farmer behind that has a life sentence? It'd it, it be tough because you want to see somebody else get the same blessing that you got. You know, every man deserves a second chance, you know. So you just got to stay prayerful. You got to pray for them and try to support them however you can. Like I just told you, I just sent them $100 the other day. You know, hopefully you'll be able to get some commissary, stuff like that, you know, but Man, you want to see people get blessed like you. But it's been many a days I had to watch other people go home. And I wish it was me. So now that I'm out, you know, I understand. I don't just forget people. You know, I accept their phone calls. I talk. Somebody need me to make calls. I make calls. If I need to track somebody down for somebody to relay a message, I try my best to help other people because I know how it feels, you know? That's what's up. Look, Nick, man, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show, man sharing your story. You know, it's a story about redemption, man. You, you you went to prison. You did some things you shouldn't have done in there, but you learned. And now yeah. you're out. It took 20 years yeah. of your life, but you're out yes. there. And I, I want you to live your best life and definitely appreciate you coming up. Anything you want no to say doubt. before we get ready to go, brother? Well, I just want to say for anybody that, 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 that act like they don't know that their day is coming, stay strong, stay focused. I never knew when my day was coming, but it came. There's always a chance and hope at life if you don't give up. So never give up. Stay strong and be positive. And God will do his best to get you out. 
I'm going to tell people, man, if you like what we're doing, you already know. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. With respect, Blood on the Razor Wire TV. Until tomorrow, we're out. Thank you.